going to start off with this week's parsha a little bit. It's a Sikha and Chelek Aleph. Parsha Skadeshim. The Rebbe starts off, it's on page 254. The Rebbe starts off that this week's parsha starts off with three things. The first thing is Kedoshim to you, that Yidin should be holy. The second thing is a person should fear his mother and father. And the third thing is to keep Shabbos. The third thing is to keep Shabbos. So I just want to speak out a little bit the three things. The first thing is Kedoshim to you. It's very interesting. What does Kedoshim to you mean? The Abisha tells us be holy. What does it mean be holy? The Abisha gives us 613 mitzvahs. And then in this week's parasha, the Abisha tells us be holy. What does David Shur want? So Rashi explains Kedoshi means we should be separated. Kodesh means to be separated. And it goes on the concept of Arayas, of forbidden marriages. So it's a repetition of the concept of Arayas. That's the way Rashi learns. The Ramban says, this is the, the source of the whole concept of Kedoshi Tiyu. The Ramban says, no, it's coming to add something. The Torah is coming to add us is Kaddish Atzmi Chobam Because we know that there's three things. Torah is divided into three things. There's things we're not allowed to do. There's things we have to do. And then there's the, in the middle. Torah tells us you can't eat Chazer. Torah tells us you have to eat Matzah on Pesach. And every day, I could eat whatever I want. So that eating, the Torah never speaks about so that the Ramban says is Kedoshim to you, the Abish is telling us to be holy, is telling us that even the mundane things over there also we have to be holy. Here the Ramban says that if not for Kedoshim to you, the Ramban says, not for this possible Kedoshim to you, a person would be able to be, the Lashon of the Ramban is Novel Birshus A Yid would be able to be, in other words, would be able to be a low life and is going with the Taira. A youth could be a, 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 he's not eating chazer, he's not wearing shatnas, he's not doing any avedas, but in the end of the day, he's a low life. That's what the Ramban writes. Because what he could do, he, no, no, thank you. what he could do, he's doing totally without any limits, without any purpose. So there's still, he's still acting like an animal. So Torah says, Kedosh to you is telling us that even in the mundane things, Ayid also has to bring in Hebekite. That's what the Ramban writes. It's very interesting. The Kleyoker wants to put together the Pashas, it's a Machlik, the Ramban and Rashi. Because the, Ram, the Ramban is the one that says we're speaking about Dvarim HaMutorim. Even Dvarim HaMutorim, Kedosh to you, Ayid has to be holy. Rashi is saying we're speaking about things that are also, and the Torah is just repeating itself. So the Kleyoker puts them together. The Kleyoker says, if you look in Rashi, Rashi says, wherever we see the word Kedoshim, it's the concept of Ko Mokim, that is Geder, Ar Erva, it says Kodesh. He uses the word Geder. Literally, it means the concept of Arayas, or the concept of forbidden marriages, we say Kedoshim. The, so the Kleyoker says Geder also comes from the word fence. He says, here the Torah is not saying, speaking about forbidden marriages. Here the Torah is telling that every person that you have to make a little bit of offense. So it's also taking our mundane things and making out of it an offense for, for a mitzvah. Which Kedoshim to you has two aspects. One aspect is if, if it's not needed for, for the service of Hashem, we refrain from it. And the next thing is creation to you to bring in Halakite. To bring in Halakite. It's very interesting. The Rechaim HaKodesh goes into this concept of creation to you. And he explains that a Yid will say, okay, look, I'm still a limited person. I still have tithes. So the Rechaim HaKodesh says creation to you comes to such an extent that if a person is doing something that he has such a geschmack for, let's say a person's eating, I guess example is you're eating their best food. The most geshmaka food. So the Erechaim HaKadosh says a yid should do it totally for the Eivish. So he says, just like when a yid is putting on film, you ask him, why are you putting on film? He's putting on film for Hashem. 
except for Mary the Gishmak, but his whole Gishmak is that he's doing for, for the Ebushter. So he says, everything we do should be in the Ifen of Kaddish, as if we're with the Mary the Gishmak. So, so he says, but how is it possible? At the end of the day, we're fooling ourselves. So the Ramban, the Erechaim Kodesh says, Mir de Gizach. He says that when a Yid does a mitzvah, so, or he, it looks like he's talking about the Kodeshim to you. Even, the, even when we do a mundane thing, we do it for the Eivishter, we bring down the Eivishter in us. The moment we bring down the Eivishter in us, that will give us the strength that it, that we should that it, that we should be totally for the Eivishter. So what? Yeah. He says wh- when we start off having the intent that we're doing for Hashem, this is whatever we're doing for Eivishter, that brings the Eivishter into us. And once the Eivishter is brought into us, that will already give us the strength to take it be. <coughs> It's just in, the, 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 just, just bringing out the general concept that Kedushim to you, according to the Ramban, the Irachaim Hakadosh, and that's the the way Chassidus, the Rebbe, and the Sikh is going. Kedushim to you is not just referring to to things that we're not allowed to do. Kedushim to you is adding even what we're allowed to do. It should be it should be hayward. The Ramban goes on to say that we find by a lot of things that the, the Torah does this. It says, for example, by Shabbos, Torah lists. We know Lama Tes Malachas, we're not allowed to do on Shabbos. Then the Abishur tells us, rest. You just told me, I can't do this, I can't do this. Okay, automatically, I'm resting. What's the Torah saying again, rest? So the Ramban Shita, his Shita is, the Torah is not just repeating itself. He says that a person could be, you're not going to do 39 Malachas on Shabbos. But you could actually be working and be busy full time, even if you're not going to do 39 Malachas. You could be dragging all your stuff and go to the market and uh, be selling, buying and selling, making deals and everything, and you're not going to be over on any of the Lama Tesmalachas. It's possible. In your house itself, you could carry things from one place to the other. In the market, you could do business. You're not being over. So that the Torah says, Shabbosin, you should rest, is adding. Not only you can't, but it, it's adding something. There has to be a day of rest. So... He brings another example. The Ramban brings another example also when it comes to, to business. The Torah says you can't cheat, you can't lie, all the things you can't do. And then the Torah says, then the Torah says something that we learn out, you should go with Nimishur Sadin. The Torah says a certain passage that from there we learn out that you should go with Nimishur Sadin. That means after the Torah tells us all the knots, the Torah tells us what you had to do, which takes us a step further. According to the Ramban, just not doing is not enough. Where does this go to Fnimi Shasadim? It's a possible that we learn out that you should go with Fnimi Shasadim. That means, the Torah tells us don't cheat, don't do all these things. But then here the Torah comes along and tells us, yes is, go beyond to try to make the other person yeah we learned that from a possible maybe so it's it, according to Ramban gives three examples where the knots are just limited but then the yes is adding in business not only what you can't do but then the Torah says try to go with Nimishur so then Shabbos not just don't do work but you actually should rest and then the Rabban says, Kedoshim to you is not just don't do Averis, but actually bring Hashem into your mundane, mundane life. So Kedoshim to you, this, this week's parsha is Kedoshim. According to the Ramban, and this Ramban is quoted in Tanya, quoted in, in the Sikh of the Rebbe, is a very, very powerful concept. The Ramban himself says, a, a, a Yid could think he's keeping the whole Torah, but if he doesn't keep Kedoshim to you, he's still living like an animal. Just not doing, not doing, not doing. But what is his life about? It's just, it's just uh, nothing to do with Hashem. Kedoshim to you is bringing the Eivishir into our mundane life. But this is the concept of Kedoshim to you. The Rebbe calls it, the Rebbe calls it something similar to what we find in the Pasuk. V'niflinu, the Moshe Rebbe asked the Eivishir, V'niflinu aniva amcha. A yid, the Yiddish nation should be beyond all the other nations. It should be a halic nation. Like, 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 they should have morals in addition to the, to the rules. 
in addition to the rules, we should have morals, right? That's a, that's a good Haggadah. Right, sometimes this person just keeps to the rules. I kept to the rules, I did everything right, but, it, but very interesting. It was a very interesting, it was very interesting that something that it had to do with you know, between a, how to how to, to act in a certain situation. And in Shulchan Aruch, if you just went after what it said in Shulchan Aruch, you would pass in a certain way. And I, I came to the Rav, and I asked the Rav what the Shaila was. What the, what the, I asked him a certain Shaila, and I wanted to know what the answer was. And the answer, I, which I thought was the answer, was what, what it said, what it's, it's going to say in Shulchan Aruch, what the answer is. And the Rav, like, blew my mind by giving me a whole different answer. And the answer wasn't based on what it said in Shulchan Aruch. It was based on, on, on being a mensch. So I told the Rav, what you're saying is not what it says. What you're saying is it's from the fifth the chaylet. You know what they say? It comes from the fifth chaylet. So the Rav said, who says it's the fifth chaylet? Maybe it's the first chaylet. Meaning this concept of being a mensch, why is it the fifth? Maybe it's the first. And then comes the four. There's four chalakim in Shulchan Aruch. Maybe the four chalakim has really come after, the, after the, this chalak. Why is it the fifth? Terecheres kodmo la teira. So you could keep all the rules, and I'm sure, you know, if maybe if I would ask someone else, you'd tell me the halacha, you think. It. But then it was simple. It was, a, it was a certain logical concept that the sensitivity of being a mensch, which which changed the whole, the whole, the whole concept. So too, Kedeshim to you. You could keep to the rules of all the, the whole Torah. So after Torah, Kedeshim to you. The can't just, that's not enough. And uh, this is Kedeshim to you. Like you said, you have to have the morals, we have to be a mensch, bring the Ebesh into our day-to-day life. Ki Kodesh Oni. And to the extent that it's very interesting over here, it says, the Medrash says, Yochel Komeini, you would think that you could be as holy as the Ebesh. The Ebesh says, no, I'm holier. Ani Hashem, the Pesach finishes off, Ki Kodesh Ani Hashem Alekechem. Hashem says, don't worry, as holy as you get, I'm still higher. So the Rebbe brings from the Nochem Shonovler, the Nochem Shonovler learns it differently. Yocho Komeini, as a fact, not as a question. A Yid could be similar to the Eivishter. Because the Pesach says, Hashem is so holy, and Hashem is our Eivishter. Hashem is our Eivishter, that means we could reach to that level. too. Yochel Komeini, how? Because the Eivishter, who is our Eivishter, is so holy, that means that you could be there too. Yeah. He says, Kedusha Si, Milo, is in Kedusha Aschem. Yeah. My Kedusha comes from your Kedusha. Come from your Kedusha. I mean, very interesting. I just want to say another word. The next thing the Torah says is, Ish Imei Va'oviv Tiro. It's very interesting over here, very, very interesting, because I, I, I heard it many times, and we always hear it, but I never saw it in the Pasuk itself. There's a question that Rashi asked, and the Gemara asked, uh, the question, it starts off Ish, singular, a man, Imoi Va'oviv, his mother and father, Tira'u, they should. They is plural, huh? Ish is singular. It should have said, a man should fear his father or mother. The Lashem yeah. would be Tira. Tira'u means they should fear. So if you start off saying ish, a man, of your mother and father, Tira, you should fear, the Torah doesn't say that. The Torah says Tira'u, they should fear. Tira'u is they, is you should fear. You should fear? Plural. You plural, you plural. I mean you plural. Uh-huh. Why, if it starts off ish, which is singular, why is it finished with plural? So the Gemara says, and this is what Rashi explains, that the, we're speaking about a man and a woman. So really the obligation of, of it's on the man and the woman. And therefore we say tira'u, plural, because the obligation is both, on boy and a girl. So why do we start off saying ish, which is a man? Because in the end of the day, once people get married, the man still has the opportunity to fulfill kibbut aveim. But the woman has much less of an opportunity. Because she's already, she's already, she has already the obligations of her family. 
the man is not so uh, restricted to his family. He's leaving, goes in and out, he goes to business. So if you go to business, you go in and out, you might as well pop by to your parents too and, and do keep it a vein. But the woman that's like she's over there already in the house. She has her own obligations. Teresa says she's posted from Kibbutz Avim once she gets married. So therefore the Torah says Ish, only the man is obligated in Kibbutz Avim. The wife is posted from Kibbutz Avim. On the other hand, we say Tiro in, in the situation where she's not married, if before she gets married or if that's something that happened later, then she gets her obligations of Kibbutz Avim. Or in times where she's able to even while she's married. Maybe. Or when she's able to, if her husband like, yeah, if her, and the family, uh, everything is, is, is going smooth, that she's able to. Then she's then That's also. the reason why she's put it. Yeah. Not because in the even keep with the Baal. The whole family, the Gansa Mishpach. The, the, Similar to... The Baal takes precedence. In, 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 no, in, uh, there's, there's the halacha. So, the Erechaim HaKodesh gives a new touch. A, a lot of times people hear, you hear it, and the stories about it, and you can even see it. It says that if you're going to honor your parents and, f- and respect your parents... Your children are going to respect you. And you see it. You see by some people that they're always speaking bad about their parents in their family, in their house. So you see that later on, their children start speaking bad about them. Because what are their children here? They heard their father say that his father is such a bad person. So they, they take the example. and They say, okay, so I'll also speak bad about my father. The famous story with the... With the child, with the clothes, mm-hmm. the child met his grandfather in the street, and his grandfather was wearing rags. He didn't even have a proper clothing. So he came to his father. He says, well, "Why are you not taking our grandfather in?" So he said, "He said there was a whole story that he started spilling things. He's not able to, to take care of himself, and therefore I can't have him in my house anymore." So the son went up to the top of the. He asked his father for a coat. His father gave him an old coat that he could give to his, to his, his grandfather. He took the coat and he split it in half. So his father said, why are you splitting it in half? Why don't you give him the whole coat? He says, half is for him and half is for you when you get older. So then his father got the message. He says, take him in. So he realized that if he's going to treat his father that way, his son will treat him that way. So the Erech Haim HaKadosh says, that's a Taish in the Pesach. If a child fears his mother and father, Tira'u, you're going to get two. It's two for the price of one. If we respect our parents, it's not just we're all respecting our parents. Tiro'u, automatically, hmm. our children are going to respect us. So we get two out of one. Starts off with one and finishes two. Because if we respect our parents, really two people are going to respect the parents. Our children will respect us. And it's very interesting. He says this is both in a physical way because the child sees the, a living example. So, you know, he sees how we respect our parents. That's the way he's going to respect us. It's a living example. He says also, it's also beruchnis. Because he says the parents, when they have a child, they give all their, who they are, they give it over to the child. So if they are people that are respecting their parents, that influences their child's genes that the child will respect his parents. And the last thing is to keep Shabbos. So in this sikha, the Rebbe makes a connection of, of all these three things. And the Rebbe says the connection is that Kedoshim to you, we have to be holy in everything we do. But the goal is not just we are holy. The goal is we should give it over to our children also. The greatness of Avram Avinu, the, the married the Gezach, that when the Ebersh said Avram Avinu was so special, the, the Ebersh didn't say just because he was so special. The real greatness of Avram Avinu was that he gave it over to the next generation. So the Rebbe says, so too, when we're talking about such a general concept of Kedoshim to you, it's not enough that we take it for ourselves. It could be the most Hele Giyid. But we have to give it over to the next generation. There was something they say about there was, certain, there was a certain Chassid that was a whole day in shul. And he never came home. So his children had no connection to, to Chassid even to Yiddishkeit. So the father was in one heaven. They say the father was in the heaven. And, and, the, and the children were in the earth. So the Pasuk says, right after Kedoshim to you, you is going to be holy, and everything he does is holy. Okay, you'll think, who knows where he's going to end up being. So the Torah says, no, we have to bring it over to our, to our children as well. And, the, and then the Pasuk says, how do we do this? How does a Yid 
bring the Abishir into everything he does. So that comes through Eshaf Seisai, remembering Shabbos. Shabbos is, 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 reminds us of the special connection that we have with the Abishir. When we remember that we are connected to the Abishir, higher than the world, higher than nature, that ever goes into whole Arichas that the Goyim are limited to nature, but a Yid has a direct connection to the Abishir. That's what Shabbos reminds us. Shabbos is Shabbos La Hashem. In the whole creation of the world, it says Elikim, which is nature. By Shabbos, it says Havaya. That means Shabbos is the connection of a Yid with the Evishter. So when we remember that we're connected to the Evishter, so then in all our things, we, we connect with Hashem. This is the first Sikh of the Rebbe. Comes the second Sikh of the Rebbe, this is what's with Yonagul Mashiach. Yonagul Mashiach, the second Sikh of the Rebbe, the Rebbe starts to explain that this avoid of Kaddish Atzmachob and Mutalach is always very important. But for the Geula, it's especially important. That the Rebbe says, to bring the Geula, it's not enough that we learn Torah and we do mitzvahs, but to bring the Geula, we also have to have Kaddish Atzmah. And that comes the next whole Sikh of the Rebbe, explaining what's the connection of this special Avayid of Kaddish Atzmah with the Geula. That's the next whole Sikh. So the Rebbe says in general, it's very interesting, the Rebbe says in general the connection is because the higher the light of Hashem that we're bringing down, the more important we take away is even like the small details. When something is not so great, so then the small details aren't so important. The greater it is, the more important every little thing is. is you know, they had over here, they had with the space, the, the, the shuttle, the space shuttle. It went up. So when, when you're going so, so high, every little detail counts it was one spaceship that exploded because the one of the screws weren't strong enough they say something no huh in the early early times it the Yiddish guy was killed yeah because the the so the said yeah so when that happened the Rebbe had the Rebbe had a whole sikh about it right he, no, this is, the, this is a lately. Huh? This is lately. This is lately. No, I'm talking about uh, years uh, ago. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So here also, the, right lately, something something went up, but at the last minute, something. The more the more uh, refined something is, the higher it is. Every detail counts. Mm -hmm. That's what people say by Yidden. What are we making ourselves crazy when we do a mitzvah? You first do it with your right hand, then you do it with your left hand. You know, every little thing. There's so many details. Why is there so many details? But the more important it is, the more every detail counts. When a person has open heart surgery, so then everyone has to wear a costume, everyone has to be covered, everything has to be sterilized. When you're going, the more important the thing is, the more delicate, the more every detail counts. So the Rebbe says that for the Gula, being that the Gula is such a high revelation of Hashem, it's not enough that we don't have Avedis. Even our mundane things have to be elevated also. That's a simple connection of Kaddish Atzvah and Mutalach to the Gula, because the Gula is such a high revelation of Hashem that for that, everything has to be sterilized. Even our mundane work, mundane life also has to be holy, to be a vessel for it. But the Rebbe says, that's in general. Everything has to be top level, high level. But why dafke kaddish atzmecho b'mutlach? Why is it so important kaddish atzmecho b'mutlach? And then the Rebbe goes to two explanations. Mitzad the person and mitzad the world. And the Rebbe starts off, mitzad the person, because we're bringing down the revelation, of the Geul is going to be the essence of Hashem. So our Avedis Hashem has to be, meaning the whole Eibesh der Kiviyach will be revealed. So the whole person has to be serving Hashem. If a Yid just... Like you said, just keeps to the rules. We will ask him, but who are you? Who are me? He's Johnny. You could even be Johnny and keep the whole Tata Mitzvah. And he's Johnny. You know, you, you could have you could have a guy keeping the whole Tata Mitzvah. And he's, uh, his name is Johnny. And he keeps the whole Tata Mitzvah. Kaddish Atzvachom Amutalach means that the whole person is, is, is serving Hashem. The Rebbe brings a Meridik in Medrash. The Medrash says, the Medr says, You will be acquired to me by that a Yid is involved in Torah and not involved in anything else. The Rebbe asks, Why is it so important that you're involved in Torah and you're not involved in anything else? 
So the Rebbe says, for us to be acquired by the Eibishter, that means our whole being is the Eibishter. So that means our whole being has to be the Eibishter and nothing else. So the Rebbe says also, for us to, be, to bring down the Geula, means we bring down Hashem Himself. We have to give our, our whole selves to the Eibishter. And then the Eibishter gives him, him his whole self to us. So the vessel for the Geula is not just keeping Torah Mitzvahs, not doing Averis and keeping Torah Mitzvahs, but where are we? Where are we? Our whole selves has to be Kedoshim to you. We're all given over to the Eibishter. Knu Li, we're all uh, given over to the Eibishter. That's Mitzah the person. And Mitzah the Avoidu, we know, the Rebbe says, a Merdikizach, the Rebbe says, a Merdikizach, the Rebbe says, nowadays the Eibishter gave himself over in, only in Torah Mitzvahs. The Allah is that people that are bringing Bikurim, they're on their way to Yerushalayim to bring the mitzvah of Bikurim, you have to stand up for them. Because being that they're doing a mitzvah, Hashem is resting in them. But the Allah is not if a guy is doing business with Shem Shamayim, you don't have to rest for him. Because Hashem is found only in the Torah mitzvahs. When Mashiach will come, Hashem will be revealed in everything. We'll be able to see Hashem in every little thing. In the nature of the world, we'll be able to see Hashem. We'll, be, we'll not be able to see it. Huh? So we're not be able to sit. <laughs> so we stand for Hashem. We'll stand for Hashem. <laughs> it says it says that the Malachim will say Kaddish to us, just like they say Kaddish Kaddish Hashem. They'll say Kaddish Kaddish to every Yid, and every Yid will be revealed Hashem. So, the Rebbe says, what's the vessel, the preparation that we're doing to reveal Hashem in the mundane world? It's by bringing now Hashem into the mundane world. And how do we bring Hashem into, into every little thing we do? That will be the vessel to reveal Hashem, the Geula, when we'll see, Eneid Movadi, we'll see how Hashem is in everything. So both beside the world, that will also love in the world, everything in the world will, see, will be seen, Hashem will be revealed. So for that, we have to now start bringing Hashem into everything we have, reveal Hashem in everything we have. And also, to reveal the essence of the Eivishter, that's by us putting our essence in the Torah Mitzvah. Our whole being in the Torah Mitzvah. Our whole being means that there's nothing left. Like the Rebbe gives the example from the Mikveh, in other places, if a person tables in the Mikveh, but one here is sticking out of the water, it's not a good feeling. Why? The whole person tabled. At least let that part be tar. Because when one thing is sticking out, that already shows that it's not the whole person that, that, that's here. So the whole person, it's just my example now. <laughs> if it works or it doesn't work. The whole person we, we, should be involved. It's very interesting, the end of the Sikha, the Rebbe says that this comes through learning Pnimis HaTayra. Pnimis HaTayra gives us the Koyach for the Kedosh and Tiyu, for a whole, to reveal the essence of our Neshama, which brings down the essence of the Eibishter. Because this really comes, the, the realization that everything is Hashem and our whole being is the Eibishter, comes when we learn Pnimis HaTayra. It's very, very interesting. I, uh, someone told me today a very interesting thing. What? He said that the Chsam Seifer, the Chsam Seifer, we know the Chsam Seifer was from the biggest in Nigla and Kavola and everything in the past uh, 200 years. Mamash was from the biggest. So the Chsam Seifer actually used to play violin. It's, there is a certain Rebbe Avram Seifer, one of the Enoch of the Chsam Seifer, he went to the Rebbe for Yechidus. And he told the Rebbe that he saw a paper from the Chsam Seifer. Where over there the Chsam Seifer st- explains all different concepts in music. He himself composed many in the Gunam. Different things in music. He explains it. Al-Pi Kabola and Avedis Hashem. And it says over there also the Chsam Seifer himself used to play violin. But he used to play twice a year. Chanukah. And by a chasen of a yosem. To be misameach, chosen the kalav, a yosem, a yosema, he would play the chasam seifer himself, would come to the chasna and play and play the violin. But however, the the einiklach of the chasam seifer did not want to print it. Did not want. They didn't want to print it. They didn't want to print. Chasam seifer was known for his goenus, his chuvas chasam seifer, the deepest concepts in Torah, and they're going to print that he played violin and he's explaining different songs and he composed songs. They didn't print it. So the Rebbe told Rabbi Avram Sefer that I want you to try to get it and print it and I'm going to pay for the printing. So someone was telling me this today and I was discussing with him this concept 
we were thinking about it, that why was it so important for the Rebbe? That so the world is looking at the Chassam Sofer, that he's a big guy sitting in a shtibul and learning Nigla and Chassidus. And, and, and to the Rebbe, it's so important to say that the Chassam Sofer play violin. Why, why is the Rebbe ready to print? What, what's, what's Negev? But I, but I think it's, it's this concept of this Sikha. Because what, is, what message are people taking from the Chassam Sefer? That get closed away from the world, and there you're connected to the Eivishter. In the, in the base Medrash, Chassam Sefer, but in the, his mundane life, his mundane life, you do it fast, chick chak there there's no Eivish. Kein the Chassam Sefer, and Chanukah, to, to be Mepharsim, in the nest of Chanukah, he's playing violin. For Yosem and Yosem, he's playing violin, and he's explaining the music, how the music it has the, 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 the connection with Eivish. I just played the Sikha last night in 770, about this, the Rebbe was saying about the Alter Rebbe, that he stopped everything he's doing to negotiate with the same Yisrael for a payment that an almona owed, and he was harassing her. And he went, Pasha, and Reb was saying a whole message from this that we should learn from this, that you have to be able to break away from the Kedushas of him and not worry that you're going to get contaminated by dealing with something that's thing to be able to do to do a Teva Yid. He, he says, he, he, who know, who's bigger than the Alter Rebbe? We are Efes Kotzei of Hashem Etzmineu should learn from this type of anhaga. The Alter Rebbe in the middle of him, Keeper also went and took care of her. The Bavusta Maise went to eat. Uh, uh, so he says that the Rebbe was saying this is, uh, and brought a guy from a tunnel in the, the thing from a, a Kohen who wanted to, he, who became Tommy through dealing with the, with the thing and he had to go to the Mikveh again. But he had to be Pearl the Indian, so he went and he was, he, it's a lost Matamavan. You know what I mean? So the same thing is, uh, so the Rebbe says, it's the same type of Nukud over here. You know what I mean? The break away from the learning and the violin. So, Ufton in Welt. This, uh, you know, this Indian of the violin is, Indian, you know, it's Ufton. Yeah. Because these people wanted to box the Chsam Sefer into a certain box. The Chsam Sefer was only in, 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 in the base of Medrash. And he, he, had no, he didn't bring the Abishur into the world. So, to the Rebbe, it was very important because we, it's a, it's, you're not giving a mistake. You're not letting people get the right message. And we have to have the Avayid of Kedoshim to you. So how are we going to have the Avayid of Kedoshim to you when we see that some Sefer brought the Eibishter into his mundane life? He wasn't embarrassed to play violin for a Chassan and Kala. The playing of the violin, this was a, a mitzvah of Sameh Chassan and Kala and, and a minig a of, 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 of Chanukah. And he brought the Eibishter into his mundane life, into mundane things that seemed to be mundane, but he brought it, made a mayor to Kedusha, and there we should take the message. Sometimes we're scared. Sometimes we're, what people are going to say, or it's the pasnish. Maybe I have to be in a certain so, kedushim to you. This is the, this is going to bring the good.